uh, next let's move on to a discussion on the field of leukemia, starting what we have available today and where we're headed in the future. Briefly, let's discuss the currently used antibody therapies in leukemia. And what we're going to start with, uh, we'll start with actually CLL. And uh, in particular, I, we treat a lot of CLL, I've treated a lot of CLL over the years and uh, different types of lymphoma and Hodgkin's, is that currently the three major antibodies, I'd say, is, you know, historically rituximab, but also abinutuzumab and ofatumumab. Now, the differences between those three antibodies are, are actually with respect to the mechanisms of action, for one thing, and also the structure function of the actual uh, antibodies. Now, rituximab does primarily both ADCC and complement-mediated cytotoxicity, perhaps some direct signaling. Um, but obinutuzumab, which is also known as GA101, actually is very interesting. It's a type 2 CD20 antibody. The other ones typically are type 1. And with a type 2 CD20, it's very interesting. They do much better ADCC and essentially little to no complement mediated cytotoxicity. So you're losing one thing, but theoretically you're gaining with respect to maybe signaling and with respect to uh, looking at the use of the patient's own immune system. When I look at a CLL patient though, I think that what makes sense here is that in upfront patients, there was a study of chlorambucil alone versus chlorambucil and obinutuzumab or chlorambucil plus rituximab in the upfront elderly patients primarily with uh, CLL and looking at those three arms. And what was interesting is that the chlorambucil and obinutuzumab had uh, uh, basically a better with respect to objective response rate, but also it was interesting, a little more depth with respect to say, in patients where they could min uh, measure minimal residual disease, had a deeper response. And uh, not as, uh, and rituximab and chlorambucil had a significant activity, but not as good. Now we talk about ofatumumab, it's very interesting because it was actually made to do better complement mediated cytotoxicity. It does have ADCC. We've studied all three and others in the laboratory. But I wonder if really the truth, the truth really holds is that if you use a very good chemotherapy regimen, for example, say betamustine rituxan, and I use any one of these betamustine and obinutuzumab or betamustine ofatumumab, is this a playing field actually equal out? Is if you bring actually synergy together with, say, combination of drugs or agents and the antibody, are we really going to see difference that we could see as monotherapy, but in combination therapies, I'm not quite sure where these are all going to fit. My personal opinion is it's, going to, it's hard to beat rituximab. It's been around a long time. Obinutuzumab, theoretically, in my opinion, will work when you have a more intact or effective uh, effector cell. So in patients that are, say, end stage or after three or four cycles of different therapy, they may not have as good of an immune system intact or effector cells. They may not have as good of activity as in the upfront setting. Whereas maybe ofatumumab, where complement seems not to be depleted as much as the effector cells, maybe it would be better later in the course of therapy in these patients. So it's not clear, but I think it's exciting to know there are definitely differences between them and more data is needed. So, the evolving paradigm of treatment for CLL, again, I mentioned these are choices. Uh, I think that we can say that chlorambucil and obinutuzumab in upfront setting for patients with comorbidities or elderly makes a lot of sense. But I don't think we can extrapolate. I think that some physicians have asked, why well, I'm just going to use, I'll switch rituximab and obinutuzumab for everybody. It's not been approved for that yet. And I think we have to have caution because I don't think there's data yet to, to suggest that. So